Hello, everybody. Hi, guys. We are not Scott Wilson or Jeremy Ork, but we are doing the show tonight. Yeah, we've got a cool guest tonight. We do have a cool guest. He's our own team member. Yeah, the guys is, missed out. His name is uh, Scott Smith. And he's laugh right. We're going to have tons of fun with him. We got a couple of announcements to go over first. First of all, we want to wish our brother down in New Orleans a very happy birthday. Yes, Mr. Howard Petrie. His birthday was yesterday, so happy birthday, Howard. To the number one aquatic demonologist. That's right. <laughs> uh, second, uh, we need to keep uh, Scott Wilson and his wife April in their prayers. April had surgery and then had to go back to the hospital again last night for chest pains. Um, she is getting to come home tonight, so. Maybe. Word. I've seen she's not. Oh, uh oh. It's up so, in the air, but keep Scott and uh, April in your prayers, guys, because they've had a lot going on this week. So absolutely. Uh, next Saturday, the twenty sixth, is Jeremy's birthday, and he's doing a fundraiser on Facebook for Autism Speaks for that. So Yep, he wanted to make sure we announce that. Yes. So if anybody's interested in donating to the Autism Speaks cause. You can do so on Jeremy's with Jeremy's birthday fundraiser. Uh, next Wednesday, <laughs> this lady's been putting up with me for 20 years. So uh, next Wednesday is our 20th anniversary. So we're going out of town for a few days. Took some vacation. So 20 years. 20 years of putting up with me. She deserves a freaking medal. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, last but not least, Fear Fest. We want to make yep. sure everybody's uh Salina, Kansas, uh September twenty fifth and twenty sixth, I believe. Yes, I think so. <laughs> I've seen all the advertisements, but I didn't commit it to memory. Salina, Kansas, Fear Fest. Be there, be square. <laughs> all right, let's bring in our guests. So, like we said, this is uh one of our teammates for the Hoosiers investigating new ghost society, or otherwise known as things. Um He's been with Jeremy probably the longest out of any but any of us. So let's bring in Scott Smith. Yes, we have two Scots. This is Big Scott. Oh, oh, hey, oh, sorry. Oh, my hair good. Okay, good. Hey guys, How you <laughs> looking doing? good. Looking good. <laughs> yes, I am a clown. These guys can attest to it. You got to have fun every time. You got to have fun. Twenty fourth. I was told. I was told that everybody's been asking Jeremy where he learns things, and he keeps bringing my name up, and I tell him to stop that because I don't <laughs> teach anybody anything. I'm just an old guy, but you got to have fun. Um, Absolutely. I guess everybody wants a little bit of backstory on me. Uh, hi, Glenn. I'm new to this, so please, everybody, under, you know, Jeremy's been begging me to do this, and I figured, well, the last two shows, I'll get on here sooner or later and do what I can. Hi, Sydney. Uh, they always refer to me as the old man or, you know, some of the other teams, the grumpy old guy that always yells at everybody, get off their lawn. That's me. I've got 12 acres behind me. Get off my property. <laughs> well, Crystal just disappeared. She's a ninja now. I guess I'm not it. <laughs> she's, uh, she's walking over there to share out the video to all the people that we shared. Too. Okay. Um, you guys got any, I don't know. This first for me, so you guys got to tell me what you want or <laughs> background because I'm not one. I usually keep to myself, and that's the guy. Well, we're we're going to go through some of your background with some of the questions we're going to ask tonight, too. Like, what got you into the paranormal to begin with? This property right here. There's Native American burial grounds in the back. We've located when we were younger. Hi, Tammy. Uh, when we were yo lo or younger, we this used to be all field through here. So every time we'd plow, we'd pull up arrowheads. Uh, we've got I've got inside, and I forgot to grab it. Uh, we actually have a hatchet or a tomahawk head that still had the braiding on it when we it come oh, wow. through. Uh, we have basically a bucket full of arrowheads. Dad and I would always find back through here. A uh, few people, friends of mine that I trust with their abilities have come out and they honestly think that there may be somebody out here buried someplace because of the activity we have through the house and through the grounds. Um, growing up in this house, it's the house was built in 67. 
Uh, property was just a basement. I was born in 72. So yes, get your old man jokes out of the way now. It's okay. You know, whatever you guys want to do. <laughs> you're, only, you're only five yeah, years old. Yeah, yeah. You're not saying nothing. <laughs> but uh, experiences I've had personally in the house and when my father was alive too growing up here, uh, we would sit down in the basement watching TV and in the kitchen, mom had the old iron skillets like every farmhouse used to do. You would start hearing a tapping on the old the skillets and you'd turn around and actually see them moving each individually and you tell them to stop and they'd all stop. My dad said, oh, it's just don't worry about it. It's nobody to worry about. My dad never believed in any of this stuff. Um, as we got older, we built onto the house and made it another, another two stories up. And we have a full deck, and that's what I'm sitting under tonight because I enjoy the air conditioning, but I am an outside nature person. I like to be outside in the sun and just do my thing. And we've had, there are situations where we were sitting down watching TV. We'd hear our upstairs door open where it was just my dad and I here. Mom and my sisters were gone. And we'd hear somebody walk across the upstairs to the upper deck and open the, the sliding patio door up there. And then we'd hear it slam shut and they run back. And so we thought somebody's breaking in. And yes, being out here on a farm, we do carry firearms. So I took one and come out the bottom of the door around. Dad coming up the bottom of the steps. We heard somebody running. I was 10 foot from the door, fully shouldered, ready to go to stop the person. Not to hurt them, but just to get them stopped. And then the door slung open and slammed shut. And then dad come out, he come up there and open. He goes, was that you opening and shutting the door? Because the doors we had inside, the French door slammed open, they slammed shut, and then the outside door did the same thing. Just uh, couldn't figure it out. So we no more than walked downstairs, and we heard it happen again. And we, it happened off and on throughout when mom and my sisters were not here. And there's other situations where... Um, once I got older, got married and moved out and was actually at my other house, my dad called me at 2 a.m. in the morning. And we've had stuff happen through this place all the time. But to have dad call me and say, something's going on in this house, I need you out here. Being two miles from here, I was out there in about two seconds. I mean, not literally, but it was, I came in sliding, stopping. And he opened the door up and we walked in. I said, what's going on? The vacuum cleaner had turned on by itself. So I thought, okay, you're, you're screwing with me, but it's two o'clock in the morning. You're retired. I still have to work, and now you're pissing me off. He goes, nope, the thing's unplugged. He had it in his hand, and he was standing there shaking it like this, and it turned on again. And I looked at him, and he goes, that's what I'm dealing with. Well, me being, as Jeremy calls me, the master to bunker, I followed the cord. He had the wrong cord. Some of it was still plugged in the wall, and it had a bad switch on it. I pulled it out of the wall, looked at him, and I said, I'm going to bed. And I went back home. And, you know, he laughed about it. We, we, you know, we laughed about it till the day he died. It was something that he goes, I never believed in this stuff, but yet we've all experienced things out here. Um, some of the stuff that I've experienced out here when I was younger and in college, couldn't find my keys, looked everywhere. And I just walked towards the house. I'm like, all right, look, I'm going to be late for school the keys and let's try to get going i walked in the front door through the french doors and my keys were laying straight out every key different direction and now if you drop your keys 10 times there's no way every key will land in a different direction i simply picked it up told them thank you the joke's over and i went out and i was like i was shaking so i was like okay there's something in here working with us then um that's some of the stuff's happened here my mom's had experiences here where uh, after my divorce, my I was getting ready to buy a house and dad out of the blue said, no, you need to come back home. He was in his late 70s, so he didn't have the strength to do to take care of the place. So I did. I came back home and, you know, I was at work and mom said that she was down in their old bedroom and she turned around and there was a, as she explained it, a Native American lady, dark black hair or Hispanic lady, I should say. A red dress, dark black hair, red lipstick. She just smiled at her. And she goes, Scott's at work. He won't be home for another hour, but you're welcome to stay. And she hung her clothes back up and turned around. And the lady was gone. My mom, uh, 
her side of the family has abilities, my cousins. We don't, you know, it's something we don't all talk about. But uh, my cousins that deal with it, my aunt does deal with it. And, uh, you know, we, we can talk about it openly without, you know, any kind of ridicule. And uh, I had an aunt that's passed away that she would see shadow people walking up to her house out of the woods and tell us where they were at. And my cousin would look at me and I looked at him and we could see, you know, we knew what he, she was talking about. But everybody else was like, there's nobody out there. There's nobody there. Don't worry about it. Um, we've had that situation after she had passed away. Our, our uncle had passed away before that. And my cousin, who um, both, you know, has the ability, we we're at my aunt's funeral sitting there. And that was when I was still married. My now ex-wife was sitting on one side. His uh, fiance was sitting on the other. And then him. Well, we both looked up. We both see my uncle standing there above the, the coffin. It was it was weird. <laughs> Oh yeah, Scott. I'm. But you know, that's just. Yeah. Are you seeing something? <laughs> yeah, he and he told me to tell him if I saw anything. So behind you, which side? If you're looking which at your side? screen, yes. The other, one. The other right, side, right there. No, no the, other. the other side. Other side. Oh, other, other side of you. Yes. Be right. Alive. Okay, you see that little bush right about where your finger just was. Yeah. Keep going back right just there. A more. Right in there. Keep going back just a little bit more. Right, right in there. there. I just saw. I saw some of yep. the white kind of poke out and then go back. Well, you've got. I've got deer up here too. So, and there yeah. some. Are, I've got some babies running around. I got full of door, but I've already forewarned you. I start talking about this stuff, and that stuff in the woods will come up here. Yeah, we've sat on the couch and watched. You know, I was having a bad, bad day. And I come in, I was pretty hot. And I come in, slam the door, sit on the couch, even turn the TV on. And I look up and there's a man standing right here at the door. I looked up and met eyes with him and he was gone. He had a chest plate. He had deer skin pants on and he was full Native American dress. Uh, my background, my fifth great grandfather was an Indian chief of the Blackfoot. So... It's in my family. Uh, we, my mom did genealogy, followed it back. But the uh, that grandfather, uh, his daughter, they would, you know, we would call them princesses. They're just the chief's daughter is all it is. Right. She married. She was, or that's how we got involved with the family. They married into the family, and that's where it kind of the bloodline came down. We tracked it, but you can only track it back so far. So. Mm -hmm. um, Sandy Griffin, I live in Indiana. If you're asking, I just seen it. I'm sorry, I'm not even watching that. I apologize, guys. This is still new to me. No, you're, no, you're, you're fine. fine. Yeah. Normally, we handle the comments. Yeah. And okay. hi to everyone, and thanks to everyone who shared. We really do appreciate it. Um, Glenn said she's seen. They've seen something, too. I saw a shadow or spirit moving around that. in the woods. To the right, yeah. It's doesn't surprise me at all. This place is active. It's crazy. We, I would bring Jeremy out here with uh, friends of ours, and we'd sit out here on his porch and just watch the woods. Jeremy actually thought I set somebody up out in the woods to walk the woods. I said, well, let's go down there and walk. He actually seen his first shadow figure here at my property. It'd walk out of the woods. Uh, sorry. Walk out of the woods somewhere about this area, down lower here, and then travel and then there's a pine tree behind my head at the end before it goes to the pasture and they'd walk in and disappear. And you could sit there and almost time it and it would happen. And I haven't sat out here that much, but it does, you know, I've just, uh, you know, it is, you know, I just get used to it after a while. Like, yeah, whatever. Okay. I got things to do. Leave me alone. <laughs> you know, I treat them like family. I really do. Yes. Yeah, Sandy, um, Sandy does it scare you? Man? There's been times that, uh, it's gotten a little edgy around here, but to be scared about it, um, I've been uh, with growing up with this stuff in my own personal opinion, you got to stand your ground mm -hmm. and, you know, you stand mm -hmm. your ground, hold your ground and let them know that who's boss. Basically, you know, it's not like I'm walking into their house saying, Hey, I'm going to sit on your couch, kick my feet up, drink your, whatever you have to drink. And this is my place now. You know, I just, I just have a good, I make sure that they know their boundaries. 
but yeah, yeah. it can get scary sometimes. I, um, I think sometimes uh, from my own experiences, I get startled more than I get scared. That would be a good way to put it. It's kind of like, well, Oh, okay. Well, whatever, you know, yeah. carry on. You guys are doing your thing. I'm going to do mine. Get out of my way. I got work to do. <laughs> I mean, that's how it is. And being out here on a farm, you know, I take care of mom. I take care of my kids when they're out here. The kids know it. The kids have abilities. Uh, it scares the hell out of them. Uh, my daughter is knowing how to take care of it. And she does the same thing. Um, I guess some of my background, I know I've just been rambling and I apologize, but, you know, everybody's been wondering how that do I get called Big Scott one? Well, since I'm five six and little Scott's five foot, there's kind of the difference. Yeah, uh, weighing probably by a hundred pounds, uh, and just you know, that's one thing. But then also the term ninja. Yes, you know, I've got people all ask me, "What is that about?" I started in martial arts when I was 13 years old. I'm 49. I'll be 49 in the end of July, but I have been a martial arts since 13. I've got two black belts under my belt, literally. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've done the martial arts. I've done the study of the, the meditation, uh, prayer work, uh, mom. Uh, hey, Scotty, you heard that one. <laughs> you know, my mom, just to give you an idea, she is, she was and still is a prayer warrior. The church will actually call her to pray over people. So I think I got it naturally just from the backgrounds of both sides of my families, from mom and dad. And then uh, my own abilities, you know, I with the martial arts, there is meditation involved. There's praying involved. It just depends on how you do it. Some people look at that as the meditation isn't, you know, isn't godly. And it is, you know, Lord says meditate and pray daily. You do that, you're going to open your own abilities up. And when they, the reason they call me ninja is because of the martial arts, but I also have an uncanny way of sneaking up on people, even if they're looking right at me and not realize I'm there until I say something. A you know, good example that everybody's seen is all over the internet was Scott's son, Aiden. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. See, uh, we were with Tammy, myself, and then Scott's friend, uh, Jason, we're walking Waverly Hills. And I looked at Jason, I looked at Tammy, and I said, just, I said, just don't make a sound. And Tammy looked at me, she was, oh, God, you're not. And I said, yes, I am. And I walked that hall, probably 50 foot, dead silent, and got up to the point where I was standing on the other side of the wall, and I just glanced over, and I seen Aiden starting to move, and that's when I jumped out at him. And he about shit, I, excuse my language, but that kid come up, he did a good front kick. It wasn't, it wasn't close, but it was still funny. <laughs> Yeah, Rosie hey, is Jason Walker. <laughs> hey, Scott, can you send that video to Wilson? Can you send that uh, video to Tim and we'll play it? We'll do screen share and we'll play it. It's it's priceless if you haven't seen it. I'm just doing my thing and having fun. I mean. Hey, there you go. You and everybody go. Go ahead. That's one of the things I was going to ask you about is the importance of having fun on an investigation. Because so many people, they, they, they take it I so know. serious. Yeah, and and uh, right while I love it. No, me, I'm this way. You know, you can't, you won't pin me down. Uh, yeah. My own personal opinion, uh, what you have to do, you think about it. Would you want to walk into a an office situation, per se, and everybody's just typing, mundane, nobody's doing anything. You try to ham it up, somebody gives you a shitty look. You know, you try to have fun, they get you, you know, you get crappy. Not you, but somebody gets crappy about it. If you're going to walk in to do an investigation, you know, first you feel out the client that you're doing with. We do a lot of residential, so you got to feel the client out. You know, if they're scared, you don't want to be an ass to them. You know, you don't want to be able to run around acting stupid. And, you know, I got to tell myself that because I, you know, I get, I try to get the thing stirred up, but in a good way, not malevolent or evil bad i try to make sure the thing comes out having fun or it understands hey this guy's not a stiff shirt let's <laughs> talk with him that's what it seems to do we were at uh, a private investigation ricky jeremy myself and tammy 
And when we got out of the vehicle, Tammy and I got out of the vehicle. We were the last ones to arrive because of my work schedule. Everybody knows I work 24 seven. It seems like no rest. Mm -hmm. And when we got out and I looked at Tammy and I grabbed the side of my truck and I was like, uh, she, I just shook my head and she looks at me. She goes, what? And I was like, there's nothing in this house we're going to. She goes, what do you mean? I said, it's over here. It's at the next door neighbor's house. And she goes, are you sure? I said, yeah, it's whatever it is, is on this side. It's not, there's, this is pretty much going to be a dead zone. And these people had camera footage of, uh, you know, my thing with dust orbs and this can be thing. I've seen things that are legit moving light anomalies and I've seen dust and you can tell mm -hmm. if you watch and watch and watch, you know, the different dust is like a hailstorm where light night alarm, they can jump all over the place and change directions just like a bug. But they right. had a lot of that stuff and they said, oh, and they caught an apparition in their, in their dining room uh, window. Well, as I was watching this, where they're taking the picture and showed me, it ended up being a reflection of the person that was sitting just a hair off screen turned sideways the way the camera angle. So I walked up or snapped another picture. Everybody sitting duplicated immediately. You know, Jeremy calls on calls me the master debunker because I look at everything legit first. I don't knock anybody. If somebody has the abilities and see it, that's great. If I can't, I'm not going to say, you know, if you can, great. You know, that's just maybe they're not showing themselves to me. Maybe I'm not feeling it tonight. Maybe it's not me. But, you know, I look for all the natural remedies. You got dust, you've got pipes, you've got stuff banging around, you know, older homes. Pipes are going to move regardless of how secure you think they are. You get air pockets in the water pipes. Um, you know, you're going to make all kinds of racket in there. It's that's just how it is. And you got to look into that. So, hey, we always have it in this room, this room. Well, if you start looking and following, OK, there's a bathroom on the other side. You know, that might be a pipe bang. And as you're standing there, you'll hear somebody flush and then bang. You know, you'll hear some noise. It's like, well, OK, there you go. I don't think you have anything to worry about. And I don't knock it, you know. People are, if they're calling us in, there's a good chance they're genuinely scared and frightened right. and don't know what to do. Right. Right. So yeah. you know, I try to That's go in there and be yeah. Go ahead. That, <laughs> That's the reason. That. That, oh, I you, yeah, it's picking up my echo again. That's the reason why okay. I became a paranormal investigator was to help people in their homes. That's right. my favorite thing to do is residential because anytime I can give them some closure, and if it's not paranormal, hey, even better, right? Right, exactly. Because no, you don't have to be scared. Awesome. You just need to get somebody in there to fix it. Exactly. Blake, you're asking where Jeremy is. He's on the road right now, I think. Yeah, he had a, he has a, something going on tonight. Yeah. So he may pop in here in a little bit, he said, but we'll see. And see, personally, for me, when it comes to paranormal experiences, I would rather call it not paranormal and it be paranormal than to say it's yep. paranormal and it's not. Exactly. I would rather you say. You don't want to walk out of there. Yeah, it's dust, it's a bug, it's whatever, as opposed to saying, oh, that dust is paranormal. Correct. And, and I will look at stuff, look at stuff. Oh Something like a banging pipe. I can also tell them, look, you need one sheet of drywall. You need uh, go to go to Menards and get some 50 cent pipe hangers and screw them into the wall there and you're good to go. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I mean, people would, you know, they got the EMF detectors. And it's, when they first came out, you know, people were swearing by them. But your phone always, your phone and people, I work communications. Yep. You know, some things that help me out is my backgrounds. One mm -hmm. thing my background is I do custom audio, custom builds on cars. And I also have done communication services on two way radio. So I'm up, I was up on those towers. I was down in basements crawling through with wires tied to me to get the wires crawling through rafters. You learn where the EMF does and you learn what the, you know, just the output of it and what these detectors can pick up. Your cell phones, for instance, even being on airplane mode will sometimes ping and yep. they're looking for yep. where they're at. So it, it's just the way it is. Yep. And that's why, yeah, I'm guilty of it. Just like everybody else. I use my cell phone, to take pictures. I use my cell phone to do video or to 
videos and recording. I've got a whole bag of stuff, but it's like, do I want to carry and look like I'm back, you know, look like I'm in a military full gear or, hey, this is what I need. This is what I go. I hardly yeah. take pictures anymore because yeah. of the fact that I'm so used to, you know, if I see it, I want to snap it and keep record of it. But at the same point, I'm like, well, that was cool. Uh, oh, dang, I didn't get a picture of it or I didn't get it recorded or, you know, right. just like where were the hills? You know, when I was walking through there, when we first come out of command center, if you, you know, I know we all got different names. Mm -hmm. Scott, don't be talking about me like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a, I got an image to uphold. <laughs> but, but, you know, even out of Waverly Hills, uh, when we all decided to start going our different directions after they did the uh, initial, you know, telling us what happened mm -hmm. through the place. As soon as we walked out, I had somebody in my left ear. I was right next to all the locked doors. I heard somebody coming. Hey, you. And I, was, I turned thinking somebody's coming up right behind me. Tammy was standing there. And she goes, what? And then uh, one of the one of the, the uh, I think it was Amanda's son from Shadow Seekers was walking with us. And he's like, you all right? And I said, yeah. I said, I, I know what it is. I said, yeah, I'm fine. And Tammy goes, did you? To have somebody say, I said, yeah, somebody said something in my ear. I don't know what it was. I said, thank you. I said, we'll be around. You know, what am I supposed to do? Freak out? It's just kind of, it caught me off guard because I wasn't expecting it. And, right. and those, right. are, those that have been on investigations with me know if something catches, you know, if I catch something, I'm usually moving pretty damn quick to see what the hell's going on. And, you know, everybody else is looking at me like, what the hell is your problem? So, um, but, well, Scott, I, I have that video to share, so I'm going to share that real quick. <laughs> this what he was talking about was scaring Aiden. So I'm going to throw this up here real quick. See if I can find it. I know my face scares everybody already, but this was even better yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here it is. I'm going to play through it. It does go in slow motion. <laughs> the best part if you had audio running running on it scott's on the floor laughing going oh my god you know, he can't even get up he was laughing so hard <laughs> oh and i aiden i know he hated me at that point in time i'm like i got you and he's like oh. he just shook his head he didn't want to talk to me he walked away from me <laughs> Well, Aiden, and, you know, when we were all, Aiden's do that so kid's credit, though. Do that kid's I, yeah, credit. He, you didn't run away. He, it was a fight or flight situation. He was ready to fight, and that was good. I, you know, I, I'm smart enough to know when I scare somebody to keep a good four foot between us because I've been hit many times, you know, scaring people. But I also help out at a haunted location, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit here. So. Um, you know, Tammy was there. She was, <laughs> she said that was the funniest ever because <laughs> she's seen the whole thing live version as I jump or come out at the kid and Scott was on the ground trying to get up laughing. So that was definitely, it was an enjoyable time. Um, I just start rambling. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> no, you guys put me on for like two hours. <laughs> we have a kid who's well, just yes. living. I don't know. Uh, well, you guys asked me kind of what got into it besides growing up in a haunted house and still actually have activity going on here. Even to this day, I do. Um, some of the stuff that when my daughter was first born, uh, 1999, the Indiana ghost trackers had formed. And then that was when you seen ghost hunters coming out and that, you know, that era 2000 ish, you know, they were coming out on the, and it, uh, I thought, you know what, that's something that I've dealt with over the years. Now I'm seeing it live. But other people are dealing with it. So maybe I'll look into it. So I kept watching the shows. I'd come out here to dad's because he had satellite and we'd watch shows together. He's like, that just run me out of the house. And I was like, well, it might, but um, I don't know. You know, we'll see what's going on with it. And, you know, since then, then I contacted them and I went to one of their meetings. And it, from there, I don't know if it, I could say it went downhill or went uphill either way, but 
they were an organized group all over state when we would meet once a month for a meeting and then we'd go out to an investigation, whether it was a cemetery or where we were at at the Masonic Lodge, you know, and that was, you, if you understand the Masonic Lodge to try to get in there, let alone do the stuff, they were welcoming us to try to find what's going on in there because the building itself was old. I witnessed shadows. That was the first time I witnessed shadows and I had a follower come home that night. We had a big investigation going on and I had a follower come home and we called him Cinnabons because the cinnamon whiskey the guys drank. Four of us dealt with that guy or you know, something with that nature to the point that when I uh, had gotten home and just calming down, relaxing, going to bed, a door was open in my bedroom, somebody was standing there. Now, the only male that's supposed to be in that house is me. And to look up and see somebody standing there, I come off the bed in about two steps, kicked the door open, which dented the wall. Of course, my ex-wife, <laughs> oh, she was pissed about that, but I was like, somebody's in the house. And she's like, what do you mean? So she had our daughter, and I, I checked the whole house, I checked the perimeter, and there's nobody there. Come to find out four other people had that same experience that night. Um, and we've had another experience where we were at there for a Halloween party and had come home and was watching TV in a room with a door open. And it looked like our daughter just ran by, <laughs> ran by in front of the door. Well, where she would have ran by, she would have tripped over our son's toys. And it wasn't her. I went and checked both kids. They're both sound asleep. So I sat down and I said, uh, young lady, you need to come here right now. Now, you know, I'm talking out of my ass right now when I was doing this, thinking this shit ain't going to, you know, it ain't going to be nothing. Two indentations on the floor and the carpet sunk down. And I you need to go back to your mom. You're at the wrong house. She's waiting on you. Now go. Indentations disappeared and never had an issue since. But with it was a, it was a little, I sat there for a while going, Holy crap! It's just really, <laughs> really happened to me. <laughs> just, right? It was. Right. I mean, it was just. It was crazy. I mean, the and the stuff I've seen. Uh, I've got a list here, so that's why I'm looking down. I ain't gonna lie. I don't have all this in my head. I've got card wiring jumbling through my head all over the place. So, <laughs> sorry guys. I have to write stuff down. I guess my old age. <laughs> we have a list but, here, so don't feel bad. <laughs> it's not as big as yours. It's right here. <laughs> just notes um some of the places uh really got me intrigued with indiana ghost trackers we went to you know they went to the, a lot of the well-known places but at the time i'm the only household income two kids the wife paying for everything i wasn't i didn't have the funds to go to a lot of these places so i made up to it we friends the group from the group we'd go out to some of these cemeteries no disrespectful whatsoever but we'd go out to the cemeteries and a big one was Eel River. Everybody has had experiences out at Eel River Cemetery. It is insane. You haven't been there. And you haven't been there? No. no. Yeah. No. You amateurs. <laughs> yeah, we, we, need to, we need to collaborate some more investigations around your stuff. Well, everybody with when we were the bigger group, we had everybody from Indy up here. They actually stayed the night after the the jail I talked to you guys about a little bit earlier, and I'll yeah. get into that here too. But they stayed the night. That's why the whole jokes with everybody was like, oh, he can cook. I went through three pounds of bacon and two dozen eggs. I made everybody <laughs> breakfast, made sure everybody was full before they went home. That's how he I does am. Cook. I like to eat. Randolph. Yeah, and that was, yeah. And the fun part of all that is I didn't get any of it. You guys ate it all before I did. <laughs> one hot dog is all I got. Yeah, I think we got it. I think you're too. Well, you, yeah, maybe. But that was that was funny. And Tammy told me too. She goes, next time, make your plate, hide it from everybody so they can't get it. Where yes, exactly. It, 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 I had fun though. That's the main thing. But like Eel River, uh, the background on Eel mm -hmm. River. If anybody works up Cordon's defeat or Cordon's defeat, um, what they do, I will do that, Tammy. I'll eat next time first and not tell everybody. Uh, yes. What, yeah. they, <laughs> what happened at Corden's defeat uh, that I found? They used to have a placard out there, but it's no somebody stole it. Thank you to Indiana thieves. But the where the Eel River, which is no more than a creek, it really is just a small creek. Thirty to forty 
soldiers, the Union soldiers come over thinking they're going to run off this Indiana village <coughs> or Miami village of Indians. Hey, Jeremy. Looks like Adonis is trying to uh, move with his presence, kind of. I'm trying to. <laughs> hey, pay attention to the road there, Crash. You're breaking up. You're on country road, dog. You're going to break up the whole time. How are you doing, Scott? Anyways, I'm doing good. Doing good. Um, what had happened was... Jeremy, go out and come back in. Across, you us go up. Yeah, you guys are all locking up. Yeah, yeah. now we're what all locking up. Hey, Jeremy. Yeah, Jeremy's did it all. Um, Jeremy, you just killed everybody. Anyway, uh -oh. but you guys are up. Uh, <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, you just knocked everybody out. That's all right. <laughs> well, everybody's listening here. I'll keep talking because I'm a rambler. Um, yeah. to 30 to 40 soldiers come across thinking that they were going to uh, drive this tribe of Miami Indians off the property. Uh, they were met with over 3,000 warriors, uh, women and children mix, you know, with the warriors and that. And they all, two of them made it out. Um, they actually, the two that made it out had pulled the bodies onto them so they could wait till nightfall to actually go back and do their report. And they decided at that point it wasn't a good idea to probably try to take these on with such a small, you know, it wasn't even a battalion, just a small group of guys because they got their butts handed to them. I'm a big Civil War nut, uh, Native American nut. And uh, Eel River, you will actually go out there. Where you people have, I've witnessed two different entities walking around. Um, I've witnessed several things going on out there that I can't explain. It makes no sense whatsoever. Like a, a light forming right in the middle of the cemetery, uh, straight up off the ground, six foot, and then just vanishes. You'd swear the moon was coming up, side of a basketball, and just vanishes. And I'm like, okay, well, I hear these, you know, these heat balls, these electricity balls, that stuff. So I try to stay grounded, but I've seen enough out there that, you know, it's proven itself to me to be a, a, a good time. And what we've witnessed out there is uh, basically scouts uh, where the Tim's all dancing all crazy now. Um, but it's, you got scouts that will, crouch in between and hide between the uh cemeteries or the I'm gonna go out and come back in Jeremy and you know it's just they'll follow you around. I one time when I was out there with IGT I thought somebody was following us sneaking around so I decided to chase them down and I was chasing a person that I thought until they turned and looked at me over their shoulder and ran right through a tombstone as I hit the tombstone, because I didn't stop in time. Uh, so, you know, it's stuff like that, that I've had experiences where I've hurt myself because of stupid shit like that running through. But at the same point, uh, you know, there's also a guy that'll walk around in a, <laughs> that was a guy that will walk around in a trench coat and a fedora style hat, but he'll actually come up and talk to people and then disappear when it's time for him to leave. There's been uh, smells, that just putrid smells out of nowhere, and then there's lilac smells where it's like a comforting smell. And right across the street is Riverview Cemetery, and it seems like that's the stopping point. You can stand in Riverview, you can look up and see the shadows actually walking towards you through Eel River. Jeremy's seen it. Um, then uh, will change shape. They will actually literally change shape right before your eyes. About 11:30, the entire um, what do you want? To call it? Atmosphere completely goes weird to the point it gets you on edge. So that's just you know some of the things that's out there at Eel River to explore and have fun with. Um, most of it is all. 
all friendly. It's not mean, but it will also let you know that it's there and you're on their property. That kind of stuff. Hey, Jeremy, if you can hang out with Scott here for a minute, I've got to reset my router. Something's going on with this, so I'll be back. Uh, yeah, I had a feeling you would have to. Bye -bye. It's probably Jeremy doing it on his own. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got that mojo power. Woo! There you go. So how you been, bud? You halfway? Uh, you almost there? Um, I'm about about a half hour away. I think. Awesome. I'll tell you what. Good. I am very very tired. I only got three and a half hours sleep last night, and in the last. Let's see, by the time I go to bed, it'll be about 4 o'clock in the morning, and I'll have three and a half hours sleep in a 48-hour period. That's good for you. Welcome to my world. You'll oh, be all right. Take your vitamin B. Yeah, I've been Take your vitamin B. You'll be okay. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to keep just rambling on to different locations and, you know, if you guys got any questions, I can see the comments. So uh, I, if I'm missing it, I apologize. But if there's something you want to know about me, I'm open. Uh, I can tell you, you know, as far as, you know, being myself, I look into being, you know, like Jeremy calls me the master debunker. We've talked about that. Um, I try to look at everything legitimately reasonable first before it gets weird. You know, and that's, I guess, the only way to say say it but you know when it really gets kind of crazy and kicked up then you know let's see what you got to do what's my favorite food um i eat everything oh well here let's just say this well uh, jeremy even knocked out too white castle <laughs> i brought worst anything on a grill i'm not as long as it's still not moving i should say i grew up in a country you eat what you get you put in front of you. your mom says eat it or you're going to bed hungry. You learn to eat everything. So that's kind of where it's at. Um, you know, I, I finally experienced Randolph County. As Scott and Crystal said, that's where I really got to meet them and talk with them. And uh, that was an experience beyond. That was something I had not, ex I had not actually dealt with before. Uh, we got in, Tammy and I got in there. We were the one of the last ones in there before the major, you know, the hunt actually started. Uh, we started out, Chris and Amanda and then Ricky joined us. Uh, we started down in the basement. And the Waffle House is next there, Scott. That was also, that was an experience beyond belief. Um, but Randolph, not knowing the history of it, you know, always seeing all these guys talk about, hey, you got to go here, you got to go here. And finally, I went. And I'll tell you what, it was an amazing experience. If any of you guys have been there, I don't know. Um, but am I going to Fear Fest? I actually am planning to. You guys got to understand, for the last 20 years, I've worked nonstop. No vacations, hardly any day off. And, you know, Waverly this year, that was the first two-day vacation or three-day vacation. And my boss, who is also a good friend of mine, he about flipped out when I, you know, I went because he never seen me actually take time off. And I'm planning on taking a week off in July, and also I'm going to try to go to Fear Fest. So hopefully that'll all work out. Um, let's see, Scott, what's your favorite piece of equipment? Uh, my ears and my gut. Uh, but as far as as far as equipment goes, I would like to try to catch everything either on an EVP recorder or camera. So you have digital, you know, footage. So you have something to back up your claims, not like, oh, my God, I was the only one in here and all the chairs started flying around. I have seen that from people so many times looking for, you know, looking for it. You know, they want the attention. I'm not. You'll. I try not to ever be in the spotlight. And thanks to Jeremy. I'm in the spotlight tonight, so uh, which is fine. It doesn't bother me at all. I just, you know, he knows me, and he knows I'm pretty private and keep quiet, and I just kind of help everybody out in the background. Um, 
As far as Randolph, I walked by the, the room where the lady had hung herself. I fell against the wall. Uh, Tammy, there, she witnessed it. Chris and Amanda, Chris asked me um, if I was okay and why I couldn't stand up. I kept leaning at a 45 and I felt nauseous and it was getting hard to breathe to find out that lady had hung herself and that's how they would found her at a 45 degree angle after she come off the chair. Um, as we went down the cholera room, I kept saying there's something down here because it stinks and it's something with death. And they told me that's where they threw all the cholera stuff at. Um, so I know mean, you guys are going to laugh because I have to tilt my glasses one way to look or take them off. And that's why I have my face shadowed out. No, <laughs> just trying to read everybody's comment. Um, down there also, we, we experienced shadow people walking back and forth and to actually physically see them right directly in my periphery, or right in my viewpoint. I've seen it before, but it had been so long. I thought somebody was down there with us. Uh, I walked down there. Uh, Tammy walked with Chris and Amanda and Ricky kind of followed behind and I turned a corner and swore I seen somebody go down into basically what was the old coal pit. And I said that I'm going to go down there and I walked down there. And as I approached the coal pit, I heard a growl. Now, growing up in the country, you know what a raccoon, you know what a coyote, you know, you know, the different animal growls. It wasn't none of those. I stepped into it anyways, and I took a step out. I stepped back in and said, it's your building. I understand that. We're not here to be disrespectful. I have, you know, all we're doing here. So if you want to see it, show yourself, let us know. And I stepped out. We continued on through the men's kitchen area, uh, the men's dining hall. We got to the kitchen area where Doris was. We paid our respects to Doris, and something had come running up, and I am talking full run tilt. I thought somebody was going to hit me. I spun around so fast that Chris just about dropped his camera, and he's like, what was that? What did you do? You know, I moved that quick. He didn't realize it, and I was ready to – defend myself because it sounded like somebody's running up on me. Now, granted, we're all friends there. Nobody should be running up on it unless they were scared to death and running up too. It just, I spun. I was like, you guys didn't hear all the footsteps come. I mean, it was a straight on hard run. And I thought for sure somebody was basically going to tackle me from the back, but there's nobody there. So I thought this, I said, this place is getting interesting. So we walked on, we went in the women's area and then we got into where they stored the food, the meats, and they had the big chopping block there. Well, my leg starts hurting. Now, granted, Chris and Amanda have not told me anything, nor have I read up on this place. So I'm like, man, why is my knee hurt so bad? It has not hurt for three, three, four months. Now it's completely tore up. So then Chris tells me that, you know, this was their storage area of meats when they bring the cattle in and, you know, the butcher block that was a hundred and some years old. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't explain my knee. And he goes, well, also they would amputate people's legs here, which explained a lot. You're back. Welcome back. Yeah, I'm back. And as soon as I'd walk out, my knee would stop hurt. Um, walked down the next room. Apparently somebody had gotten stabbed. I felt that too. And I was like, this is getting a little bit more crazy. I don't open myself up. And I was made sure I was locked down or guarded, but it was still making sure that they knew it. <laughs> Scotland, Maryland. No, I haven't heard that, but um, Glenn, if you ever heard of Andersonville, which is one of the most famous cemetery or uh, um, civil war and or prisons, I had a great so far back uh, uncle. He was one of the, one of the few that actually escaped and reported back the how that was bad was and if you if you ever have watched the uh blue and gray that was on pbs years ago they had mentioned a william uh, like a william or a wesley smith uh i cannot remember for life of me can't remember his first name but that was actually my relation and who my dad was named after so i wonder if that's why dad was the way he was i don't know he could escape anything so I don't know if that's good or bad, <laughs> but there, you know, this, this Civil war side, I just, I've got books and books and books and backgrounds and we've got houses around here that dealt with civil war soldiers building them. That's how old this town is uh, that I live in. And 
I know one my actual insured agent lives in that is notorious. Everybody in surrounding counties know about it, and he's never had any experience while well, I talked to him about it. Uh, but I was growing up here and at that house and with his grandfather, because his grandfather and my dad were like this, best friends. So wherever dad went, his grandfather went, or vice versa, and all the kids got drug along. So uh, the kid, it kind of woke him up. He's like, well, you can come over and talk to my wife about it. I told him, do you realize there's a family plot on the back corner of the place? He said, no, he hasn't. He's lived there for three years and walked the property. I said, I'll show you where it's at. So I've been invited now to go to this place and walk over. Whoops. But, um, you know, Randolph, unbelievable. Um, we were with you know, Tim Coomer, a.k.a. T-Dog, when we were all as a huge group. Um, you know, we stayed friends. When him and I were sitting up there and we actually physically heard a female as we we're doing EVP testing or the EVT time block heard sorry. And we heard the, the war or the floor pop as though somebody stepped on it. Um, in that other room was, and I'm going to try to remember completely, uh, Tammy was in there, Amanda, Chris, or Chris was sitting at the door. Uh, Shannon was in there and two other people from another team. And they, uh, in that room, they were hearing growls. They were hearing pops. They were hearing moans. Tammy was hearing ringing in her ears. And every time she get up to move, this stuff would follow with her. And when we heard that female, as we said, uh, you can come here. And she's like, I'm sorry. You know, Tim and I looked at each other like, holy crap. They had EID. I, I think it was e, EDIs or whatever the new new thing is set up and you could see this thing come walking because these things were lighting up as this thing got closer to us and it went right past us and then started down that hallway and while we're watching the lights tim was watching the lights i looked up and i seen a a, a night of a light anomaly, anomaly is all i can call it it was an orb come out of the female uh the female chapel there and then went right into the bathroom and then we heard i'm sorry and that's when we come up. Of course, if you've been sitting on your butt on a hard floor, you can't really jump up and get moving right away because everything's popping and crackling. But as we got forward, uh, I turned around and made sure everybody was there. Well, Tammy was missing. She had to get out of the room. She somehow found her way back down to Command Central and out to the vehicle. And it, whatever was there really affected her. And I you know, she just stayed inside or stayed outside to rest and recoup, try to reground herself. But it was upstairs. Uh, if you guys have ever been up the very top of that, um, the uh, where the kids made popcorn and all the other stuff, we were in one room that has big TV antennas on it, and it come, you know, something was in there. I was the last one to walk out. Something come walking up to me. I thought maybe somebody was still back in there, you know, just doing the last check. I turn around, turn the flashlight on, there's nobody there. And then my flashlight batteries went out completely. And I'm like, come on, turn them back on. Light come back on. I was like, thank you. And I turned and walked away. You know, everybody says, you know, it could be scary. It, it shook me up a little bit. I told everybody, I think that was where Scott and Jeremy, and I don't know, Tim, if you guys, Tim, you guys were up on the very upstairs in the attic when we were doing that yeah. time block. And it, yeah. I told you guys, watch back here because something just come up behind me. It didn't feel malicious or anything. It just like somebody was seeing what the hell you were. My God. So um, now we got, um, you know, I went up to Crown Point with the team. I really didn't experience much up there. I helped one of the guys out because something affected him. I took him across the street. And those who, you know, have listened with the, as I talked, my background, mom being a prayer warrior, I'm kind of grounded the same way to help others and the martial arts and understanding the, you know, you've got your energy ley line or not ley lines, but your energy lines through your, your body. You've got Reiki masters and that I'm not that, but I understand pressure points from the martial arts side of it and how to readjust and how to help people ground themselves or clean up. I took this individual back across the street to a church to help him actually regain himself. He didn't even realize 
what was going on half the time. And it wasn't him. That was the only thing I really experienced in there. I'm not saying it's not. Uh, when we were by John Dillinger's uh, cell, Tammy experienced something. I almost walked right through her, and she kind of leaned back into me. Like, you know, somebody was crowding her area, and she was stepping back into me. But I don't know if I just wasn't on that night or what, but it was neat. I'm a history nut on top. Now, you know, I said I'm – History, Civil War, Native American, anything to do with history in general, all the way across the border. Um, you know, I enjoy that stuff. And so to be, whoops, sorry, great big spider just ran by. Sorry. Yeah, I jumped. Go ahead and make fun of me. Um, to, you know, to experience being in some of these historical locations, not so much the paranormal side, but just to be in these historical locations where you sit there and look and stare and then you let yourself kind of think what happened back in the day i don't maybe i'm the only weird one in the group i don't know i mean but that's how i look at it i get into the place for the history side of it a bonus is the paranormal side right you know that's the way way. hey guys um i'm I'm gonna have to hop off of here i'm gonna have to hop off of here i am almost to to the hotel need to get something taken care of before i get there so I am going to try to go live at some point tonight with the people that I'm going to be with. So stay tuned for that. All right, bud. Take care. Uh, be careful. All right, Al. Um, thank you, everybody who's watching. And Scott, thank you so much for being on this show. Everybody you needs me. to know you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I've know said, it, I've said it for years. You are the guy. So I'm just a guy, yeah, nothing fancy. All, okay. all right, so you guys, you guys <laughs> take care. I'll talk to you later. All right. All right. See you, buddy. Right, have a good one, Jeremy. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to read some of these comments. So, okay. Um, another place that I had experience, and this is where I, I seen an apparition actually walk out of a wall. And part of the training and stuff that we did with IDT is if you experience something with a group, you guys, whoever experienced it, will go catch another team member, tell them your experience, and then you all meet up and see if everything correlates or collaborates the same basic stuff. Makes total sense because then you don't have Joe over here going, all these chairs were flying around a room and Mike sitting there going, a curtain blue because the fan turned on, you know, that kind of stuff. But we were sitting down in the children's ward of the library and they called us in because they were having weird stuff happen. They caught stuff on their cameras of stuff moving around. So we're sitting there. Huh? Is this in Southern Indiana? Well, this isn't that library. No, no. This one is a local town just North of me. And uh, I didn't get permission to give their name, so you know I make sure if it's not a well-known, adverse, everybody goes there. I'm going to try to be respectful on the whole thing all the way through. But we're sitting there, and then something comes right out of a wall, stops, looks at us, and then walks out through the windows. It was a full person. Just as they walked by, they turned and looked, and it turned, and then walked so we went and actually got a uh oh i'm trying to read what glenn was putting um so what we did was we split up like we're supposed to grabbed three different people told them what we seen all got back together well the librarian the head librarian was there and she goes where did this happen i told her exactly where and what happened she goes that used to be the entrance to the library and the exit that was how it was set up and they said they had an older gentleman that would come in there every day for hours on end, grab a book, read it, put it back, and then he would leave. And that was how he came in, and he would go. And it was just, you know, I stood up. I'm like, the guy's about this tall, broad shoulders. You know, the librarian's like, no, oh, that could have been old. I think she said Frank. But it was, it was enough to be like, holy crap, I just actually seen the holy grail of this stuff. Everybody wants to see them. And when you see them, you're like, did I just really see that? Or, you know, you start questioning yourself. 
you know, I've done it too. I've seen stuff. Waverly Hills, second floor before we got up there to you guys. Um, Tammy and I walked the entire second floor by ourselves. As we come around the secondary, the second bend, we both heard something. I turned around. Something had come out of the third floor, floor, second floor ceiling down, crawled underneath the double doors, the top part of it, turned and looked, and then went right back up third floor. Let's just say I walked backwards, and I told Tammy, just keep an eye on the front. I'm watching our backs. My training, you don't leave your back open for anything. So, and I know people are like, oh, you're stupid. And I'm like, that. sorry, that's just the way it is. I always had my back watching everything walking through there. And, you know, we got down, and I was like, oh, my God. I had to walk outside just to kind of regain. It was like, that was incredibly weird. And then we turn around and come back up with you guys up in the gentleman's room, the vet's room. Yeah. And, you know, that's where the yeah. experience is up there. It was really neat. I mean, it was. I mean, I hear all these stories. Everybody sees everything. Sees, and, you know, the way I look at it, if it's my turn to see it, I'll see it. If I don't, you know, so be it. You know, but again, history, look at all the background that's there, you know, everything that happened. That's what I enjoy seeing. Um, one of my most favorite places to go, and I'm going to give a shout out to this guy, and it's actually a haunted location during the season. He does offer ghost tours and ghost hunts off season. He's a personal good friend of mine. He's a brother, basically. Not blood, but we're close enough. Uh, Paul Harrington, uh, he's the owner of the Columbia City Haunted Jail. It's ranked fifth in the U.S., the United States through USA today as the most haunted location for the, um, the haunted attraction side. This man puts blood, sweat, and tears into this place. I volunteer there. I have a good time. And again, they, the boys and the guys, and everybody calls me one, the old man or the ninja because we're all stalkers there. You know, I'm not officially their stalker, but I can go and disappear into walls and come out on someplace else and, People can't understand how I can move through walls, but, you know, it's a haunted house. You got to know how to do this stuff. But right. that place is legitimately yeah. haunted. Um, with the IGT, he knew me back when he had his, his business going at a local store. He knew me then, um, but he also knew me for car audio and some of the crazy-ass builds I did. Mm -hmm. And then when I got involved with Indiana Ghost Trackers and actually went there on investigation, he's like, oh, my God. I sh should have known you as part of this. I was like, uh, okay, sure. <laughs> so we were, you know, going through this location, going through the jail. And uh, you guys can look it up, Columbia City Haunted Jail. So there, Paul, if you're watching, you got your cheap, you know, that's all I can give you. <laughs> you got your plug. <laughs> you got your, you got your plug. I want to go. That's there. right. We, we always say on this show, we bow to no corporate sponsors. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the old Wayne's but, world bet. <laughs> there you go. We, uh, I've had so many, I've gone in there by myself and stayed. You know, the workers are down doing something. I'll walk the house. And we call it a house because the front of it is just like Crown Point. That's where the sheriff and the family lived during the time. And that they took care of the prisoners in the back. Um, some of the stuff that went on there that I personally experienced, um, there was a the one and only hanging in Whitley County. It's documented. The gentleman did not die from the neck break because it didn't break his neck. He was uh, roughly six foot four, uh, just a brute of a man. He killed his wife, who was five foot tall. He was a drunk. Uh, she had made him a coat, and. He come home drunk, thought it was somebody was there. His wife cheating on him, killed her. They found him on the tracks. The sheriff did, and I believe it was Columbus, Ohio, passed out on the train tracks, drug him back here, and they hung him. And he didn't die. His neck was so strong, he tightened up, and it it didn't kill him. They let him, uh, how should we say it, swing for 25 minutes. It did not kill him. They finally cut him down and took him into the first room there, and he suffocated 
another half hour. And if you go into that place and mention his name, you can be in a world of shit. And that's no joke because I've had people go in there, oh, that's a bunch of crap. They messed around with the wrong person. I mean, that's just the way it is. We were doing an EVP session. We were on every level of the jail. And I had a team with me. I was their team leader. I was standing on the stairwell. And we were talking. And everybody's doing EVP. And the stairs, that if you ever look at an old house, you see how thick these stair rails are. Mm -hmm. It takes two people mm -hmm. to move these things. This guy leaned onto it or something leaned onto it and the stair, the whole thing come towards me. I sat back. I'm like, man, lock, knock it off. I said, get on my face. I got hit in the chest and I went down about six, six of the stairs and I grabbed a hold of the banister to stop me from going all the way down. And I come up and I was like, that's all you got? You know, me being a smart ass like I was, I said, you got to show me something else. They had a chest sitting there, just an old pirate's chest, you know, for the haunted attraction, because you don't take it all the way down. You still leave your stuff up there. The buckle starts smacking back and forth, like somebody was just swinging it with their fingers. And then the thing pops up and then slams down. And I'm like, seriously? And then uh, the owner had come down. He goes, what's going on? I'm like, Dude, you ain't going to believe this. I said, I don't understand what just happened. But I got hit in a chest, knocked downstairs. He goes, you fall? I said, no, I didn't, you know, I didn't fall, but I said it was enough to, it startled me. And I said, I know who it is. I said, you guys were stirring him up up here and you could hear the heavy footsteps coming right up. And he just walked up and like somebody's coming up and leaning, being threatening, like, what are you doing? And uh, he goes, what do you mean? I said, grab the banister. So he gets on the stairs with me and we pulled the two of us moved at about a half of what it moved with us by itself. And I told him, he's like, all right, I think we need to clear the house for a little bit and let it calm down a little. I'm like, well, if anybody else wants to experience, he goes, oh, they experienced him upstairs in what they call the tricycle room. A tricycle, if you set down in all the corners, and it doesn't have to be the actual corner, so it's not like some ritual, but you set along the wall, this tricycle would start rolling. Now, it's a 120-year-old building. I understand the floors are warped, but when it can make a complete circle by itself, and you put a ball down there to roll, and that ball rolls three inches. That makes you wonder what the hell is going on up there. Yeah. The upper story yeah. door wouldn't – the door, they could never shut it. And this is documented by these sheriffs that lived there up until 1985. They would shut that door. They'd come up there, get up in the morning, look, that door's wide open. The one last sheriff had screwed the door shut at night. Power drill, strand three-inch screws through it into the door to make sure it won't open. It was open the next morning. He come up, looked up, and that door, bam, swung open. And he grabbed his kids and said, we're out of here. Left the prisoners, and he said, that's it. They were already starting a new jail, but he said, that's it. We're done living here. We're going to go live somewhere else. They would come in and check on the prisoners, but they weren't living there anymore after that point. And it's actually documented in the newspaper at the History Center. It scared him that bad. And this is a sheriff who's supposed to be able to, you know, he said, you know, all the rumors of that is true in there. That's, wow. Yes. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it is a, uh, it's Columbia City, Indiana. And it was, a, it's an old jail. It's a haunted attraction now. Mm -hmm. um, that was just one of the things in there. Um, when, I was in there with the group, this same group with the Indiana Ghost Trackers. Paul was in there. And, you know, he's checking. He's working on his thing. He's doing his stuff. No big deal. And we were walking down into the women's cell where there's always something. You'll hear crying. You'll hear screaming. You'll hear, I hate to say, even somebody farting. I mean, it happens. It's And it's not, you know, I always look around like, all right, which one of you did that? Like, not us. You know, it wasn't us. <laughs> we were down in the women's cell, and they had one area um, set up. Well, they had walked ahead, and I was, you know, being team leader, I said, I can either walk in first, or I'll let you guys experience it, and I'll just kind of hang back here. So I've got three foot between me and the other girl in front of me, and all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, I turn around, like, what the hell? There's a curtain behind me. Well, I grabbed the curtain, moved it back. Paul's standing there. 
we both drew back because we weren't expecting somebody to be on the other side. You know, we both were ready to hit whoever was right there. And he's like, was that you? And I said, no, it was not me. It was, I don't know what the hell it was. I thought it was you. And he goes, no, it wasn't me. Well, we're standing there talking and it just got this rotten BO, just nasty, dirty smell come around us. I'm like, dude, seriously, I took a shower. Did you? And he's like, shut up. I did too. We're, I told you guys, you guys know me. I clown. I gotta, you gotta have fun. Right. These girls came back around. They walked around. They said, we didn't, they're like, oh my God. And we turned around and looked at them and was like, what? And we turned back and looked at each, you know, I turned back and looked at Paul. And Paul's like, oh my God. This mist, and I am not kidding you, it was so thick. It was a cloud bank, went between the two of us. There was only two foot between us, went between us. You know, we could almost could just barely see each other, and it went on. And Paul's like, well, that's a new one to me. But you've got apparitions being seen. Even you know, people walking by the jail, some of the windows, they can see people in there. And they're not the workers. The security systems are set, and you know, it's, it's not the workers at all. He'll, he knows who's there, when they're there, that kind of stuff. And, you know, I've got full access to go to it with talking to him. And, you know, I like anything, I always make sure um, I get permission and he's going to be there or somebody will be there to, you know, unlock it and open it up. But I help out there. My son helps out there. And he has a blast. Scott Wilson helped out there. And I think his son, his son went out there last year and helped out yeah. too. Um, just to have something to do. They needed volunteers. They were running around crazy. And, you know, they put me down in the catacombs and it's legitimately the basement of the jail where as you're down there, there's usually two, three, two or three guys throughout this whole jail as far as in the basement. And, and where I was at, I could hear in it's stone stones on the floor because it's just either dirt floor or mud. Well, I heard somebody walking up behind, you know, coming up the other way. And I turned and look and we've got, you know, you've got little lights here and there just so your eyes, you're not complete black. But, you know, I can see people coming and your eyes focus to it. Um, you know, I heard these stones. And I turned around and look and I thought somebody was walking up to me. And I turned around I was like, OK. And I looked back and I seen people coming. So I got ready to scare him. And then I heard the stone. It sounded like somebody was running right past me back around. There was nobody there. And I could see the whole hallway that I'm, I'm supposed to monitor and scare people on. There was nobody there. And I told Paul this, you know, and I was just like, man, I don't know. And he goes, well, they know you. They're, you know, they're just coming up to say hi. I was like, well, they said hi. All right. You know, you're leaning up there waiting for the next group. And you all of a sudden you hear other things. It's like, wait a minute. What the hell? You know, where's this coming from? <laughs> it's like, right. Okay, do I stay down? Uh, there? He goes, I put you down there for two reasons. People will swing and hit because you scare the hell out of them. I said, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. He goes, also, you can handle what's down there and it doesn't bother you. And I'm like, no, it, you know, the first night I was down there when I experienced it, it did, it got me edgy real quick. I turned around, I'm like, no, you know what? I've been down here with you guys. Go have your fun. Leave me alone. I'm doing the same thing you are. I said, go get this next group before. I so I'm talking to him just like I'm talking to you guys, you know, and it just kind of went all, all just laid out cool and no problems. But, you know, every once in a while I'd get the stone, I'd turn around and look and it was like, they come around a the corner and they'd stop. Now this corners, the area I was in was 25 foot long. It had a light in the far corner. So I could see the entire hallway and it's on stone in the basement. I'm tucked up in a corner ready for the next group to come through. And, you know, I, would, I always laugh because I'd have the guys, oh, this place ain't scary. There ain't nothing going to jump out at me and scare me. Well, when they'd always come, they'd look at one direction. I'm always the opposite direction what they most people look at. And I would jump out of them. I had one guy hit the wall. Uh, I had one guy hit the ground and crawl out because I scared him so bad. Um, and this is only a third of the way through. I mean, I was hitting them. I had one guy pee himself, and that made my night. I was pretty happy about that. <laughs> you, know, big time. you know, I was just like, well, sorry. You know, that's part of the deal. I've been swung at. I've been hit. Um, you know, I've stopped people from hitting me because they think they're, you know, they're down there and one of them and four of the, or one of me and four of them, and it doesn't turn out too well. I mean, security will walk down. They, they see the, the rowdy groups, but, you know, it's just you stop the one because they think they're going to get scared, you know, 
hell, when I get scared, I swing. I mean, that proved it at Randolph because when somebody ran up on me, that's just human nature. It's fight or flight and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I guess that's, you know, that's kind of the background I have in it, growing up in it. I mean, I don't know what else really to say. God, I've talked for an hour and 15 minutes. You guys need to shut me up. No, you're fine. Well, we actually have a couple more questions for you. <coughs> Uh, how did you get involved with uh, Jeremy and things? Jeremy was a friend. Uh, he worked with uh, a lady of, named Tammy Smith. Mm -hmm. No relation to me. Tammy and I were on IGT's team. And so they got talking. Tammy and a friend of hers, Tina, were forming a group. And they kept, come on, Scott, you got to go. So me not being a part of the team, but still enjoying the investigation and getting out and seeing this place is, you know, we went out to Okie Pinoki, and that was another experience all on its own. Um, uh, but that's how I got to meet Jeremy. And I, I told him last night when I talked to him, I told him, I told him again. But when I met Jeremy, it was all about what he was seeing on Ghost Adventures. And, you know, you know, oh, this is how we have to do it. This I'm like, no, just take that shit and throw it out the window. I said, I'm going to show you because you walk in there acting like a dork like this guy and you're going to be treated like a dork or you ain't going to get nothing done. And yeah. basically, excuse my turn, yeah. a cock block of ghosts, they'll tell you to go fly a kite and I ain't talking to you, but I'm going to talk to that guy over there or that girl over there. You ain't going to get shit from me. And that's yeah. how I approach everything. You know, if you're going to go in being an ass to everybody, you're walking into their house. You know, you come into my house, start getting demanded yeah. from me. You're going to get a foot in the head and you're going to be drug outside. And I mean, you're not going to get any too farther in the door. And mm -hmm. that's how I treat everybody, every location. You don't go in there acting cocky. You go in there with respect to people and that treats you different. I don't care if you're in a, a jail cell or you're at a church. You go in there with the same respect to how you want treated. The old thing, treat people how you want to be treated. Treat the spirits the same way. And that's mm -hmm. how I got through Jeremy. Mm -hmm. I said, you don't need all this crap. You know, oh, yeah, let's buy this. Let's buy that. It does help give you physical evidence, uh, you know, light. You know, you've got physical and you got evidence. But sometimes the experience on itself does wonders for you and kind of straightens you out. Um, so that's how I got involved with Jeremy. I, I helped him. You know, he'd have questions. We talked quite a bit. And then, you know, going out as, with the other two girls and the team and trying to get stuff. We went out with friends of mine. I've had friends. But. I was just stuck with him. I mean, he told me he had the things going on. I said, well, roll with it. Go for it. And, you know, I was, when I was in communication, we were slow one time. So I pulled up and I, I found something similar to actually what he's got, unless that's the one, the things, uh, um, the things logo. You know, mm -hmm. I told him, I said, I think this might work. I, I may have found it a little bit different, but I sent it to him and said, let's roll with this. This is yours. Let's, you do what you got to do. You know, I I was working all over the state of Indiana and being part of what I was doing, I was getting into old buildings for work. And the people that I would talk to while I'm in there, oh, by the way, don't worry about this. You're going to experience this. You're going to experience that. Uh, we got a ghost. I'm like, great. That's perfect. They're like, what? You know, they thought I was nuts. I was like, you know, I'm going to some of these uh, older buildings where these towers are on the top of these, you know, these buildings that you're. They're scared to hell. It's sketchy to get into. You're like, okay. They're like, oh, well, we got ghosts. I'm like, awesome. Hi, Jeff. Hi, uh, Jeff. But, but I was, you know, I've been in places. I'm like, yeah, do you guys care if I set this out while I'm working? They're like, are you seriously into this? I'm like, hell yeah, I am. Let's do this. And they're like, oh, okay. You know, so I've got, I've got two sheriffs beside me, fully armed. And they're doing this number constantly. I'm like, what are you guys worried about? Ain't going to hurt you. It's, it's like, you know, relax and have fun. Wait to them. And we went to one where they actually, the guy's like, he goes, holy shit, somebody's down there. I'm like, don't go. And they're like, what? Well, we got to see who's in the building. I'm like, I'll go first. Don't worry about it. And like, uh, what if it's, I'm like, it's nobody's not supposed to be in here. It's not supposed to be in there. Don't worry about it. And I come around the corner and I looked up and I seen a guy with a, a uh, cowboy hat on, blue jeans, and a flannel shirt. And he looked at me, and just like this, gone. He didn't walk around the corner. He 
gone. I was like, uh, you guys can take this one. I said, I got work to do. And they're like, well, what happened? I'm like, I ain't even talk about it right now. Not till we get out of here. Because I have a feeling this son of a bitch is going to come back and say hi again. And he's like, so who was it? I'm like, I don't know. You tell me. We got we got downstairs. And I walked and I stopped and I looked at There's a picture of this guy. I said, it was him right there. It was one of the sheriffs from 1930. And that's how he wore. He did not. He was not, you know, what we see now as far as uniformed officers. All I think he had was a star. You know, I didn't see the the star, but yeah. it was it, it yeah. was a whole. That was I said, that's him right there. And they're like, are you shitting me? I'm like, nope. I said, you guys have fun. It's time for me to leave. And I was out the door. <laughs> Man, I grabbed my recorder. So I'm sitting there and they come out. They're locking everything up. They're, what are you still doing here? I'm like, I'm seeing if he was talking to us. All I hear you two jabbering. They're like, are you kidding me? And then we got something that said goodbye. And they looked at me, and I'm like, that was not me, and that was not you guys. And they're like, no, we're not coming up here. You guys, you got to get two more people to go up here next time. I'm like, you guys wanted to. Don't get shitty with me. <laughs> and to this day, I've talked to the guys. They won't. I've talked to the guys that I've worked with that have to go over there and service that radio tower, and they won't, they won't go. They're like, nope, forget it. We're done. We're not going up there. <laughs> so – these guys have to walk up there, and the other guys have experienced it too. They're like, "Man, we thought you're full of shit, but that was so, that was really neat." And one guy turned around and looked, and he goes, "Can I help you?" And he goes, "No." Nope. He thought somebody was up there, and then when he realized after my description, he said he went back to work and he dropped his tools. And he's like, "Oh my god!" And he spun around. Nobody was there. But you know, I described him. He said that's the exact same guy he had seen too. So it was. It's one of those deals where you see an apparition, you don't realize it a lot of times. And then when it happens or it happens so fast, it's like, that's it? Okay. Well, go on. Let's keep going. You know, we, had, we had a similar experience at Waverly when we were in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking across yeah. the kitchen and the moonlight was coming through. This was the first night we were there. The moonlight's coming through the window. And, uh, I'm looking over toward the kitchen area and I just see the this much, you know, just the bust of a person standing there and there's something else sitting there that's, you know, about that height and you can just see them above that block yep. and it's so dark it blocked out the window. And I yelled, <laughs> I yelled, who's over there? And boom, gone. And I mean, like the speed of sound. And I jumped right. up and ran yep. over there, and she went with me. And there was an old oven there, the original one of the original really? ovens from the place. And I pulled the door down, and she goes, "Oh, I smell fresh bread." And she looked at her phone. It was about wow. four a.m. It was about four o'clock in the morning. I said, "Well, they must just be up making some biscuits." <laughs> getting, yeah, hey, Good getting day. ready for breakfast. It could be. I mean, phantom smells. You know, I always, mm -hmm. I always clown. And you guys, whoever's watching this, if, if you've ever seen me, you know, click in. Everybody's like, "What do you eat before an investigation?" I'm always saying Taco Bell, anything spicy. You know, I got White <laughs> Castle here. You got to have fun because then, you know, I do this at work. You know, I turn around. I'm like, "You guys smell that popcorn over here by the car?" And somebody will walk over like, "Oh my god!" I'm like, <laughs> "Enjoy it." You know, I'm ornery to the core. I ain't. I, you know, you guys know me. The others are just, I, I feel they're probably figuring it out now going, this guy's nuts. But, you know, it is what it is. You got to have fun in life. Life is it's, way too short. It doesn't matter if you're Big Scott or Little Scott, you're well, going to get pranked. Well, when you think about it, how much money we wrap up in equipment and going to locations, if you're not having fun doing it, then why are you spending all that money? <laughs> right. Right. You're going to be the next film artist. Which, not me. You know, if somebody wants to go out and do that, pursue it. So be it. That's great. I'll back them up. But they, hey, you want to come along? No, I'll be over here. Camera stays there. I'll be back this way. Don't you know? I don't care to be in the shots. That's just not me. I'm there to have fun. I'm here to learn and hopefully witness something and something I can bring home. You know, and just tell my kids a story for. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. like the other night on uh, Paranormal Swamp Talk, we had Denise and Ernie from Waverly, and they said that now they don't even bring equipment. 
They just go in for the experience. They don't want the yeah. EVP. They don't want the pictures. They don't want the video because everybody debunks it. Exactly. Yeah. They, they just want to be able to say, look, this is what I seen. This is what I experienced. Take it as you will. Yeah. And that's that. And I was like, you yeah. know what? That's actually pretty smart. We spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I mean, I know how much, you know, Jeremy, Jeremy has a whole car yeah. full when he goes to an investigation. All right. Somebody think about the time say, you did this or you did that. Yep. And at the end of the day, I it, think I think all of our favorite experiences in the paranormal field are all personal experiences. Mm -hmm. Exactly right. I agree a hundred percent. I mean, everybody's like, Do you got footage? Do you got this? You know, I sent you that recording mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. Um, that was at the Confederate Cemetery the first night you guys all went to Waverly. Mm -hmm. uh, Tammy and I had stayed back because uh, you guys went with Pond, and uh, Tammy and I had stayed back, and then Shadow Seeker stayed back. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing them at Crown Point, and that's why, like Chris, you know, I was like, "Hey, you guys want to go?" I uh, said, so "We found Confederate Cemetery. It's only a few miles from here, like ten miles. Let's go up there and check it out." And that's what we did. And you know, we went up there. Corey actually caught something on his thermal during six o'clock at night about this time right now um, yep. and he was watching this thing come up and down up and move Corey and i are talking just visiting you know we're all sitting there talking Corey caught something moving and i was like what the heck is this you know and he goes look and you could see this thing on his tombstones we went it was almost like it was coming up to us to see where we're at but as we stopped talking about it and I turned my back to it, Corey and I were talking and, you know, he was having, he said, man, I've never had no, they're like nasal problems. So he stepped back on the driveway area and it went away. <laughs> and then Tammy said she was watching this thing move up and down. It wasn't like, a, you know, it looked like somebody was trying to crawl to come up and see what in the world we were doing or who we were. And then that's when, it, go ahead. It probably was. It was probably just going to see who you were. You weren't familiar. That's what we thought too, because they had Confederate Cemetery in this, you know, inside a normal cemetery. You know, the soldiers were there. The other thing that we, and that's how we got onto the um, the Waffle House. That everybody wants to know the experience <laughs> we've heard at the Waffle House. Um, so. <laughs> I will go into that detail. I don't know if Chris or Corey or anybody's watching. I know Tammy's watching. So Corey and I are talking and Tammy's or Chrissy's like, look, I've got to eat. I am starving. So we, uh, we kind of call it, you know, it's like, all right, well, I said, where you want to eat? She goes, I know where the, all the waffle houses are. That's where we're going. And Tammy goes, I'm getting hungry too. See, I go, my work schedule, the way I work with working on cars, I forget to eat lunch. I sometimes mm -hmm. forget to eat supper and I'll get up, eat something in the morning and keep on going to work. That's mm -hmm. just how stupid I am. You know, I get set that mind goal. I'm the but, same way. Uh, we get, you know, we got to the Waffle House. We walk in there and there's only, there's a family sitting on one side and two or three people on the other. And we got this dude. I don't know what he was on. He's like, hey, guys. And I mean, this dude was stoned off his ass. <laughs> hey, and we're like, can we sit here? Oh yeah, you can sit where? Uh oh. Is it us or him? I don't know. I think it may be him. Uh, bear with us here. We're having some technical it's difficulties. It's always having technical difficulties with the 13th dimension. Just bear with us. Let me double check. Let me go there so it doesn't interrupt. Uh, we're going to check a few things. <sighs> oh, wait. We're now we're buffering up. Can you guys hear? There you are. All right. I don't know what happened. Yeah, yeah I don't either. The woods come up. They're getting tired of me talking. Tell me to shut up. Who knows? <laughs> but the... Uh, the Waffle House, this guy was stoned off his gourd. We got him to finally clean the clean the the, the countertop off where we're sitting. And at this point, Chrissy's already laughing. And we're, Corey and I are sitting next to the other. Tammy's on my side, and, and it's Chrissy. And 
I know I'm going to mess her name up. I think it was Deb. She's going to yell at me if I didn't. I apologize. I'm not good with names. I already warned everybody about that. But they were uh, – this guy comes up and goes, well, what, what, yeah, man. Oh, hey, what can I get you to drink? So Tammy orders on orange juice. I ordered a Coke. Um, Corey ordered a lemonade or something kind of uh, lemonade. And then it was like a Coke. And then she asked for a uh, Deb. She asked for uh, iced tea. The kid got Tammy's. Got mine. Corey got a... a Complete different drink altogether. And I'm like, didn't you order lemonade? He's like, I'm going to take it. This dude is, oh, Tammy ordered, oh, Corey ordered orange juice and got lemonade. This dude was just gone. Gives Chrissy her <laughs> Diet Coke and then hands, hands Deb a thing of ice as far as um, iced tea. It gave her a glass of ice. It's like, all right, yeah, I got everything. And when he's getting the glasses, he's standing up there. And he puts one up, and he's standing it and staring at it and sets it down. He's like, yeah, okay. It reminded me of Bill and Ted. If you think of how Ted, Keanu Reeves always act, that goofy ass, just stoned up, that's this dude to a T. So I'm like, All right, hey, can we order? Oh, yeah, 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 whatever you're ready. So we give all our orders, and he's like, okay, well, you got this. And then you got, or wait, no, you got that. I mean, the, the, he was just everywhere. The whole time, Chrissy's got her face buried in her hand laughing. Tammy's looking at me laughing. She's got tears rolling out of her eyes. The other lady, Deb, is laughing, and I'm probably going to get yelled at because I think it, but she's just cracking up. And Corey and I are looking at each other like, are you freaking serious? This dude, oh, my God, what's the deal? Now, granted, you know, you knew the guy was stoned. He obviously, you could tell. I've seen people with learning or disorders, and this was not. This was definitely. It was drug induced. Let's just put it that way. So then he walks up and hands the cook, which is the only other guy in the entire place. The thing and the kid and Tammy's right. Uh, I just read that the kid, uh, the kid that was taking care of us. He started with the family behind us. And they had two little kids. And they got a glass of water, and the parents got their food, but the kids didn't get any of their food. So the cook's like, well, what, what's up with that? I don't know, man. Uh, I think that's theirs. Yeah, just make that. We'll give it to them. And, just, and then probably 10 minutes of this goes on. We're just staring at it. And the guy's like, "How? what do you want on this? How do you, uh, Just make it however you want. I'm not eating it. I don't care. I mean, this dude was out there. Wow. Finally, the manager comes in wow. with four of the employees. So we figured it was a major smart break or, you know, hey, let's get our hits in while these two dorks are in here doing their thing. Now, the cook, he stepped up. I mean, he did what he could, but Jesus Christ, me, this guy, he had to hold that guy's hand. But, <laughs> Glenn, you're right. He probably was off his meds or he was induced with other meds. I, it was hilarious. But they come out there, man, that food got whipped out, set out there. And I'm like, hey, you know, the kids back there are starving. Make theirs first. And they're like, theirs are right there. And the manager took theirs over there, you know, gave them. And they're like, what'd you do? And he goes, I don't know. I was doing what I was supposed to. I was taking uh, taking people's orders. And it's like, oh, my God. So that's the joke at the Waffle House where we always try, you know, if you ever see me make a comment on Chrissy's page or anybody, you know, that's what it was. This dude was still, it was like, well, he's working around food. At least he's, you know, he can eat something. But the manager's like, why don't you just. Go sit down and get out of our way. And I mean, it was just, I mean, food went everywhere. He took a lady's order on the phone and never wrote it down. She's in there to get her order. She's like, I called 25 minutes ago. And the cook looks at this kid and goes, you answered the phone. He goes, yeah, yeah, I did. He goes, did you write her order down? He goes, oh, man, I knew I forgot something. I'm, <laughs> you know, this, <laughs> we're over there just like, just like you guys, like, oh, my God. God, and, and we, we stopped at that same Waffle House and got breakfast, and we went to McDonald's and said, "I'm so glad we did." <laughs> well, the, we went. Jamie and I went in the morning and ate there. It was a perfect, perfect experience all the way through. I mean, this kid just 
he was definitely on something, but oh my God, we were laughing so damn hard. And Tammy's bringing up the carryout order. And that was the one lady who called in. The other lady standing there going, I didn't order these waffles. I ordered this, this, this. And then she goes, can you let the manager's like, can you give me a list? We will remake it. Don't worry about it. So the manager, she calls whoever she is. And she's like, text me the order so I can show him. <laughs> okay. And it, I mean, he shows it to well, in five minutes, that lady's got her food. The other lady's been standing there a half hour. We all walked out. We're doing our best not to laugh at this kid. We did tip, you know, I, I, regardless of what kind of service, you always have to at least they know you were thinking about them. Mm -hmm. So we get outside, and this lady's with the food going, that mf -er never even wrote our order down. And he, she's out there screaming at the guy in the passenger seat. And he's like, I, I didn't do nothing. What are you yelling at me for? You know, it was like it was – complete comic all the way through it was like oh my god so we get back to the hotel we're doing evps and i think we we're in Corey's room we're just getting stuff set up and we, we were still laughing about it we're like oh my god what the hell was this kid on blah 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 it was like holy crime and we're like we're not eating there again so you know we went we went to waverly that night and when we went home there we went back to the hotel when we went and left i asked tammy i'm like do we chance it? Do we, ch do we chance Waffle House? She goes, hopefully he's not there. Maybe he's only a night shift. And we walked in, perfect experience, no issues whatsoever. You know, it was all the day crew basically. But, oh, my God. I mean, food was – that's what the joke is about the Waffle House. You'll see me say something to Corey or to Chrissy about it. Hey, you know, so that's why they always say we got to have a Waffle House reunion because <laughs> – you know, that was the first we really met them and hung out with them besides at Crown Point. Right. But just to be right. there and just experience, oh, my God. we had you know, Christy's like, how did you keep such a straight face the entire time and not die? Because the girls were all looking at me, and I'm like, no, it's okay. You're good. And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, I'm gritting my teeth. <laughs> and when I got out of there, I lost it. And, you know, Tammy was like, I was like, oh, my God, that guy. And she's. She's wiping tears from her face even while she's eating because she's laughing so hard. The cook even come up that was there to deal with the guy. The cook comes up and goes, I am so sorry. Oh, my God. And the guy's like, hey, man, I got I got your bills. And he goes, just give those to me. And I'm going <laughs> to So he took care of it. But we went up and paid. And, I mean, the manager's like, everything okay? And we're like, yeah, we had a great show. And he's like, oh, God. You know, he just he said, kind of went down. He's like. I understand what you said. <laughs> well, I actually have, I actually have that right. audio clip from the cemetery pulled up. If you want to, I can share well, that. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully, yeah. If you want to go ahead, and I want your guys to, you guys out there to listen to it and see what you think it says. I got a good idea what it says. Mm -hmm. I'm always open to suggestions, and it wasn't me breathing mm -hmm. heavy. I know I. I'm out of shape and everything. I about die on two stairs, but it was not breathing, breathing heavy. So let me just say that up front. <laughs> so whenever you want to run it, Tim. All right. I'm going to play it right now. Unfortunately, you all have to see my Facebook here, but. I'm going to play it again. something but i can't make it out i think it says well, get well, out of here but well, that's what i think it says too. like a real like, get out of here like somebody's in pain yeah that, that's what i heard like, when I originally listened to it it's like they're in pain and they just you know almost like they're they're either telling us one get out of here for safety reasons or get out of here you sob we don't want you around here you know right you're disturbing uh, me. Get out of here. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to sleep here, and here you are walking over top of me. It's like, the old, uh, it's like the old uh, the old, uh, Jimmy Durante. Get out of here, boy. You bother me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's pretty much – that would be what it, I, th I think it does. And I just happened to listen to that that night we got home from the Waffle House. And I was like, or when I say get home, got back to the hotel. I thought, you know what? I'll listen to this. And I'm letting it go, listening. You hear me talking to Corey in the back. You know, I say, hey, Corey. I said, are you good over there? And he goes, yeah, I'm good. And then you hear, you know, it was just quiet. And then 
bang, it hits. I was like, what the hell was that? I just, so I saved it. I sent it to Tammy on her phone. So she had a copy of it. I sent it to Kat. Uh, I wanted her to hear it and see what her take was on it. And I sent it to a few other people just to kind of give their get their take on it to what it actually said. And, you know, what I thought it said was exactly that. Get out of here. And we weren't, you know, like I said, it was either they didn't want us there for safety reasons, being Confederate soldiers, or two, get out of here, you're disturbing me. Yeah, Glenn here says, he thinks it says get out of here as well. She. Or she, I'm sorry. Oh, that's, oh, that's okay. Yeah. Well, I will say this. I think Scott was with Jeremy when they investigated a residential, and I don't want to say the client's name. Yeah. But there was an issue with the basement being filled in. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Make sure uh, you're yeah. not a fan blowing in the room, because when I listen to those EVPs, that's all I could hear was the fan. <laughs> Um, let's just say um, I'm going to be as polite as I can. Uh, she was probably off her meds. Yeah, okay. yeah I know what. Uh, I, yeah, we know the same case. Uh, but, but when yeah, I, it's, because we know Jeremy can't do audio. Correct. So sometimes he'll send the audio to me to listen to it, and the whole time all I hear is that fan. <laughs> Like, oh no, no, it sounded like you guys had the recorder sitting right next to the fan. Yeah, <laughs> he did. And you know, everything that they said they experienced, I did some background check on this person. Mm -hmm. uh, another person knows this person uh, personally, and don't mind the gunshots back here. That's you're out. No, no, you <laughs> <laughs> I just like, all right. Um, they dabble in some stuff that yep. I don't agree with. Um, all right, sorry, something was running through the trees back there. That's right off my barn, that's not out in the haunted area. Sorry, <laughs> you, learn, you, know, you learn to live out here, you hear all the sounds, and oh, yeah. sounds you're not supposed to hear, so that's why I was like, okay, what's this? Yep. Um, that client dabbled in things that they didn't know how to control. Let's put it that way. And uh, was open to anything that could happen to him, wanted everything to happen to him. And it's like, peace out. I'm done with this. This is more brought on by yourself and your own uh, toxicity. Okay. I'm, I apologize. You know, squirrel. I got little kids over here by a pond yelling. And I'm like, they're not supposed to be over there, but okay. Um, that was brought on by their own personal wants and desires and thinking they can control everything. And yeah. I went in the first time. I'm like, uh, yeah, this ain't, you know, and uh, I found a pentagram on the floor and they uncovered it, showed it. And I was like, all right, that's it. I'm done. You know, this is just a waste. We're wasting our time. Um, you guys, I think, had went to the brothers then at that point also. Yep. And we here's, the thing, here's the thing with me. When uh, Jeremy will tell me about he has a uh, a case. Mm -hmm. I won't. The only thing I ask is what city it's in. Mm -hmm. That's it, nothing else. I don't want to know anything else. You know, unless it's in a, a crappy part of town where, you know, at that point, it's stupid to go anyways because it's probably self-induced on some of the stuff or it's due to the location, the environment. Right. Um, and I'll pray. I have no problem admitting to it. You know, I pray, I meditate over the location. I, you know, I ask for uh, guidance and there's been two or three times, just like the one, just for instance, this one that was in Illinois. I'm like, don't go. It's a waste of time and it's dangerous. Yep. Gut -tier. I told him about this person's house. Don't go. It's a waste of time. It's not good. Just stay the hell out of it. It's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. There was another one in Anderson that he insisted on going and the guy was a joke. But, you know, he's, it's just, and that it's, I just get the feeling. I get, you know, I'll go to sleep with thinking about it. And the answer will come to me in the middle of the night. Sometimes I wake up, I'm like, hey, don't waste your time. Don't go. It's a scam. 
or, you know, if you want to do what you got to do and be done with it, but you know, that's it. Yeah. Glenn, you're saying it looks like beautiful land. I've sat on, this is my dad and mom's property. Uh, my dad passed away in February of last year, 2020. I had to think a year, sorry. Um, I've grown up here my entire life until when I was married and moved out for 20 years, but I've always taken care of the place. And the trees, honestly, behind me are only 22 years old. My dad planted them for my daughter when she was first born. We planted uh, eight and a half acres of trees back there. And there are things in that woods. And it is relaxing out here regardless of what the other stuff wants to be around and hang out with. Um, I was just kind of, I'm going to turn the camera a little, or the computer. You know, you guys were pointing over this way when you see, because that's that big oak mm -hmm. back there. And right about there, that, that's an apple tree. I, we just tore an apple tree out because it got knocked over by wind last year. So a neighbor come over with a skid steer and we cut it all out. And then in this area, now you're seeing my, Okay, welcome to the farm. I got shit everywhere. <laughs> We're underneath the deck. As you can see, stuff, you know, it's an older home, but it's it's a home. Um, and this tree line here, where right through here, and I got to get my fingers right through here, as we're sitting out here at night, uh, Jeremy's seen it. I've seen it. Tammy's seen it. My kids have seen it. There's a shadow that will come out, look at us, and then back up. And it's a human. It's a humanoid shadow, humanoid figure. Um, you know, it is what it is. But they don't bother us. They come up to the, within the house. I've set barriers up. I don't need them coming in the house and screwing around with people and messing around. The kids that set barriers, you know, they know they're like, nope, you stay the hell out of here. Don't bother us. You know, my kid, you know, 17 year old, 18 year old son. So, like any kid this day and age, is on his phone watching videos. And there's times he'll be here with just mom upstairs. And, you know, I'm gone to work and it's my weekend. So he's over hanging out and all of a sudden you look up and he's, he's no stuff at the patio door thinking it's a neighbor coming over to see if I'm home or just see if he can help. And he's like, uh, dad, uh, there's somebody there, but they're gone. I was like, all right, well, you're all right. Um, but you know, I just say they're not going to bother you. They look at me as a chief. I've been told that from other people who have been out here. They like, they look at you as a protector of the property. So they're all there checking on you to make sure you're okay. And then they're going to go about their business. Yep. But where we've stood, I'm going to try it. And let me see if I can lift it up. All right. See that rose bush right there, right in front mm -hmm. of my head. Let's yep. See. There. See my, yep. my nice haircut can guide it behind that rose bush against those woods. You'll see that thing walk out and he walks across to where that pine tree is right above the fire pit there. And it goes right back in. And it's a full looks shot. Like had, looks like you got something standing on the there. There is a older, there's a smaller pine tree, a darker pine tree. It happens all the time. I got people, oh, I'm like, that's a pine tree. Uh, I'm like, that's a pine tree. Come on, let's go. You know, yeah. oh, I'm like, yeah, it's a pine tree. Let's go. Come on, I'll take you out there. <laughs> now, when, uh, when uh, the indie crew come up here and um the indy crew come up and stayed the night or before we went out the eel river and it took them out the eel river they came up and um uh, we walked inside the woods where i i inadvertently set my nephew up go figure mr prankster himself my nephew had never camped before 18 years old wants to be camping but he doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to go pay someplace. So I'm like, you got the woods, go ahead. You know, your uncles used to come out here and do the same thing. So I, uh, I said, do you want to go back to where they're at? They're at the back of the property. He's like, no, 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 no. I just, first time camping. I just want to, I want to camp close. So, all right. I put him on what we call haunted hill. Cause I'm, you know, I'm the, that uncle. I'm the <laughs> uncle that you're related to, but you're like, God, I call oh, great. Now what's he going to do? <laughs> so I set him up, cleared the area out, set the pup tent up I had, got it all set up, got wood set up, got a fire pit dug. He went and he's he's been watching the can the survival shows, so he's got his pocket knife. And I'm like, what are you gonna do? Knife a squirrel? I mean, <laughs> eat your granola bars, shut up, and come in in the morning. So 
we get him set up, got the fire going, and he's like, okay, I'm going to be good. I said, well, I got to take your cousin back home to his mom's, and I'll be home soon. And I said, if you want, I'll roll out here with the truck. I'll come up by the, the area. You'll hear the truck. You'll know it's me. And I'm only talking right up here over this hill behind me. It, you can see the house. So it's not like he's back in the boonies. Um, so I take my son home and talk to my daughter and uh, my son a little bit and my ex-wife, you know, asking what everybody went. I said, well, I got to get back out there. Chris is out there camping. So I head back out here, pull up. The fire's out. His phone light's out. The left flashlight's out. I'm thinking he chickened out already went inside. So I pull up and I'm like, hey, you out here? Now, this is April 1st. Or no, I'm sorry, April 21st. And it's only 40 degrees outside. Yeah. He thinks he's going to sleep in a freaking... <laughs> in a you know fleece blanket i'm like dude i've got 110 you know it's negative 10 degree sleeping bag you better take i don't need it i'm good i don't need it i'm good <laughs> i get out there and i'm like hey you out here and he's like oh my god he goes you need to stop messing around i'm like what do you mean messing around i said i just got out here no you didn't i'm like the truck's sitting right there it's running you can hear it well how did you get it? you had to walk out here and scare me i was like what do you mean by that he said he was sitting there looking out the lake view because behind this tree here is a huge lake. I don't know if you guys can see it through the camera or not, but there's actual lake back there. It's a man-made mm -hmm. pond that I helped dig when I was, God, eight years old. Mm -hmm. So it's a 12-acre pond back there. And where he was sitting at, you could see the lake. It gave you that perfect, everybody, you know, the, the view that everybody wants to go camping by, you got the mm -hmm. wood, you got the lake, and it's relaxing. Mm -hmm. So that's how he had it set up. He said he was sitting there, and the fire went out suddenly. Uh, just completely went out. No rhyme or reason. It was windy, but it just gone, done. So he tried. So he thought, okay, well, I'll get in a tent. So he's got a flashlight on I gave him, which is also a lantern, sitting on the top part of the tent inside. And he's got it on, and it starts flickering. He's like, well, it can't be low battery. I put brand-new batteries in it, and he watched me do it. Brand-new right out of the package. So he's shutting it for a flashlight, and he's doing this number, he said, and the flashlight goes out. So he's like, oh, my God. And then that's what got him. Flashlight's <laughs> out. Light's bright enough. You can see through the tent. He said he's seen a set of uh, fingers come up and go right across the tent three quarters around to the door and then pulled back. He about shit himself. He thought it was me. And then he's like, he goes, I turned my phone on. My battery's dead on my phone. I'm like, do you want to stay out here still? He goes, hell no. So <laughs> he, <laughs> I had to out there. So he threw his stuff in the cooler. Mine is a phone. We pulled the tent down. Cause it's a, one of those, it takes three minutes to set up. Mm -hmm. I loaded him in a truck, brought him up here, and he come in there, and he's, the, I got one room that was my parents' old bedroom down here in the basement area set up as a game room for the kids, and it's got a bed in there. He slept in there. <laughs> I got up the next morning. He's still sleeping, so I make bacon and eggs and uh, get a meal, and he wakes up. He goes, oh, there's a new gentleman here. Do you guys see that? Yeah, Muhammad. Yeah, Hi, hey, Muhammad. He's Hello. been on a couple of lives this week. Oh, okay, great. And he looks at me and goes, how did you sneak out there where I could hear or see you and then do that crap? I'm like, it wasn't me. I swear to God, it was not me. I said, now do you understand why your mom never liked to live here when she was younger? This place has got ghosts. It's haunted. It's got spirits. They're not hurting you. They just wanted to see how he goes. I ain't staying out here again. I was like, that's fine with me. I don't care. That's just one less person I got to feed next time. You know, but he's been out here before. He's brought his girlfriend out here during the day. And uh, he's like, I don't know if you believe in haunted houses or anything like that. My kids are like, oh, this place, we got this. I'm like, guys, don't scare. Jesus Christ. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Chris, you know, my nephew looks at me and goes, this is a legitimate haunted property. And he starts going into the whole stories of the whole thing. So the group that came out here. 
I took them out there. They want to know an area. I'm like, you know what? Here's a simple one. It's easy to get to because the farther you go back, the darker it gets. And it's no joke. It literally gets darker because the tree overline. But you can definitely tell you're on somebody's hunting grounds at that point. Besides my own. I mean, and I don't hunt anymore. So you know, even mowing back there, I'm on edge. And I shouldn't be on edge. This is my own property. But I am on edge back there in the very back. And what I have is a, you know, I have a six and a half foot mower deck behind the tractor that I drag. And I also carry back here because we've had instances where people have, you know, trespassed and on our property and planted dope and everything else. They don't like it when they get caught. And it gets, you know, especially when they get caught. But it's, you know, I carry it back here, but I'm always on edge, constantly looking around, constantly watching the tree line, constantly watching everything. And I shouldn't be. This is my place. But back there, you're in their area is what it is. Amanda actually felt right. stuff when she was up here and she's like, I want to come up and camp here. I'm like, you're welcome to anytime you and Chris can come up and camp. I said, I'm not fixing your breakfast. So you got to fix your own shit, but you can camp and sit out there all you want. I don't care. So it's just a matter of time to get them up here to go camping, but it's still very active in the woods. Um, we got deer, um, you know, the deer, the other night, if you guys, anybody, if anybody that follows me and is friends with me and that on the post, seen that I had posted a deer come up, walked up here. I am not kidding you. This deer was standing by that post and I'm sitting at that door in that chair right by my fridge. That's how it was. And that's how I'm just sitting there looking at my phone. When I look up, I'm like, what the hell? This deer is standing right here that close to me. And it sneezed and I started laughing and it took off like a bat out of hell. And two others come flying past me because I stood up. I'm like, was that what I thought? You know, that close. Mm -hmm. And it was about 11 o'clock at night. So it was dark. We got a, we got a, a parking lot light out here, but it was still dark down here. And these other two went and it just starts snorting. I pissed it off. Basically I scared the hell out of it. And if there's triplets that run, uh, there's triplets that run around here and everybody's like, I want to go hunting on your property. I'm like, we'll see about that. I, you know, there's a few friends that hunt. They usually enjoy seeing that like I do. I don't hunt anymore. I used to, but I'd rather see the animals running around. Now, groundhogs, that's another deal. We won't go into that because they're you know, terrors. But they will, uh, they will, uh, you know, the deer the other night we had a campfire going or start of a campfire. Let me rephrase that. So Tammy doesn't correct me because I did not get it going because it was too fresh. You know, the wood was too green. I tried and tried and tried and we're sitting there and all of a sudden she goes, there's something out in your yard. And we got just moonlight going on right now. And I looked at her, I said, what? She goes, there's something out in your yard right there. Sure. Shit. It's one of the deer. They're walking probably within 20 foot of us. And they didn't see us there. She just went, there's something in your yard moving. I looked over, I'm like, son of a bitch. Well, they took off. They got that tree line, started snorting. So I started yelling at him back. And this, this pissed him off because he started snorting back at me. And, you know, I was like, come on up here, you little shit. <laughs> now, yeah, they will. They'll snort at you. <laughs> but I see him back. And they'll, they'll stay if I'm mowing. They'll stay back there. They'll stay 20 foot from the mower and just stare at me. As I'm doing with the bush hog, they'll just look over at me like, okay. And it doesn't even bother them. I'm like, oh, you guys can't be doing this. You know, you don't want them to get killed. But at the same point, they're just, they're almost dehumanized in a way. To a point. Right. But it's like, oh. well, I guess, I mean, you, is that two hours already? I talked that long. Yeah, yeah it, it's time to wrap it, it up. It goes by quick. Especially How many went to sleep while I was talking I did it. No. So that's a plus. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, it's always, oh, we lost him. Oh. Well, okay. Well, well it's going to be the end of our show anyway, so we'll just go ahead and wrap it up. We want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. And, yes, uh, tomorrow, uh, next Friday is our season finale. Season finale. We're going to take a two month break and then come back with season two. But we will be um, talking are, about suicide awareness. Yes, it's a very um, important topic, one that's near and dear to all of our hearts. So you guys make sure you tune in and watch that next week. Um, outside of that, I'm getting ready to head into the mountains for a few days. So uh, 
You guys have a good week. We'll see you back next uh, Friday. Scott and Jeremy both will be back with us. All four of us will be on that podcast next week to uh, close out our season. So we'll see you guys next week. Um, If it's paranormal or beyond. We've got it covered. Bye, guys. Thank you, Scott.